Hey, what's up, nerd fam? This is your boy, Gashon. I want to welcome you to Into the Nerd. Today, I want to talk to you about Miles Morales. Now, specifically, they just came out with an Across the Spider-Verse Part 1 trailer, and people are losing their minds. Not necessarily over, you know, the greatness of the trailer, but because they changed his hair from the first movie to the second, and apparently it's black erasure for some reason. This is just one of those things that I I don't understand. I, I think people are, are genuinely going going crazy now. Here's here's why. Yeah. We can attack this from, from different angles here. Number one, they're talking about his texture changing, how it's like not, not accurately representing black. Okay, first angle, right? Uh his hair in general in the movies is not even comic book accurate. Right? He doesn't even look like that. It didn't even look like that in the game. So even just from the first movie, it's not even comic book accurate. So, but obviously a lot of y'all don't even read the comic book. So I guess I got to disqualify that argument, right? Whatever. Let's go. Second thing. He's supposed to be, you know, a mixed heritage, right? Um, Afro-Latino, which people, you know, they seem to understand partly, I guess, because I guess only the, the African part of it is supposed to count, whatever. And he's supposed to only have a certain texture of hair because of that of you know of his african descent as well interesting right even though there are tons of people who do look like both whatever people are up in arms about that but here's a sec well even third part i'll say right phenotypically speaking i'm just gonna go into some i guess uh this is anthropology kind of right or just genetics whatever it is um phenotypically speaking Every phenotype exists in Africa, right? Straight hair, blonde, blonde hair, blue eyes, narrow lips, even narrow nose. You can actually find all of those in Africa. And there are in tribes of people who have literally zero European ancestry. So hair texture is not exclusive to one particular thing, which means Africans would have had that too. So this whole thing about a texture of hair being a part of black erasure is just false when it comes to that right i can't believe i even have to go i have to go that route it's just it's just nuts but regardless moving past that because that's just for the logic people when they talk about representation it's always skin deep right if it doesn't represent them right because let's just not act like let's just say how miles looks in either of those movies there are people who look like either one but for some reason, if it doesn't, the, the person who gets as bad about it, if it doesn't look like them, it's inaccurate. That doesn't make any sense. Well, maybe it makes sense to them, but there's somebody out there who that represents. So why is it inaccurate? Why, why are we so mad about this? And why are we looking for ourselves? Because that's really the biggest thing. They want this fictional character to represent them. Why isn't the character just them? As a matter of fact, if you look at alternate versions, like the 616 version of him that he's, you know, he's working for Kingpin, he's got different texture of hair in there. And that's, so technically that actually does appear in the comic. Like him having that type of texture of hair actually does appear in the comic, you know, with the whole ultimatum storyline and all that. So I'm not really sure what the, what the issue is, but there's this weird thing that people have when it comes to like the degree of blackness or, you know, whether like this is an accurate black character and at first, it usually starts with the skin. It's like when it comes to representation, it's like, I have to see myself. And then let's just say that person is like a black character. Then if the things they say or the values that they espouse don't line up with theirs, then it's still not an accurate representation. The goalpost is always going to get moved. And it's weird because Miles Morales, even though I'm not very fond of the, of the character, there's tons of other like, black characters I'm way more way more fond of and it's only because they're original like he's not really an, an original character like I do prefer Peter because I grew up reading Peter uh, Peter's comics right Miles is not like a terrible a terrible character it's just a lot of his stuff is derivative that's just my opinion you can like Miles if that's what you that's what you like but this video is really more about this thing that people are so hung up on a character representing them why can't we just look at the like if you like miles why can't you just like him for what he for what he is the problem is is that there's been so much made about miles in terms of 
what he is, not necessarily who he is. You know, people are like over there thinking Marvel talking about, yes, yeah, like I finally, in my, my child finally has someone they can dress up as. They've always been, they've always been black characters in, in comics, but she didn't read them. So you don't know that. Now, obviously that's the mainstream media and the comic book company. They didn't do a good job at promoting these characters, understood. But just because you just don't see them, doesn't mean that they don't exist. You know, you understand? Now, obviously I'm touching a whole bunch of things here, but they all are kind of weaved into this thread. When I see all these groups like up in arms about his hair and what does it mean to represent and people going, oh, this is texturism. I'm like, oh my God, is this what's really happening? Is this what, are we really mad about this? Like we're just gonna keep on finding different things and it really all goes down to this representation thing. Well, he doesn't represent this group of people, but it's gonna be a group of people that he does represent. So why does he have to represent is this fictional character? Why does this fictional character have to shoulder the weight of representing everyone that's a, that has like a genetic similarity to him? Why is that? Why do you require that? Why do you require that of this fictional character? And why do you think that he's the only character that you could look to for that it's 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 a, it's a whole bunch of questions that this confuses me maybe you can you can help me let's have a conversation and we can, and we can maybe we can figure this out together because i don't i don't understand and like i said i've been reading comics since i've been young like i've never been under the assumption that there aren't black characters uh, i've seen and, and obviously they've had different thoughts you know have the icons of the world the spawns of the world you know divinity there's so many different things out there blood blood syndicate night thrasher there's so many different characters out there that one don't necessarily look like me in terms of like exactly they might be you know black but we don't obviously we don't all we don't all look alike but I was never looking for that I was just looking for cool characters but I was never fixated on their appearance and for some reason like we're just so fixated on that I don't understand it so let me know is there something is there something else like you, you let me know like what, what am I what am I missing here that we need this physical representation so much to be of us. Like, don't we represent ourselves? Why do we need a fictional character to do that? Into the nerd.